Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a video all about kind of the Russian Revolution, kind of uh, the last Romanovs, because this month during Nonfiction November, one of my big goals is to read The History of the Russian Revolution by Leon Trotsky. I have started it and so far I am really, really enjoying it. And while reading this, I have been reflecting on some of my favorite books that I have read about the last Romanovs, the Russian Revolution, Rasputin. Uh, so I decided to do a video surrounding all of my favorites. I think there will probably be some heavy hitters that are not here in this video uh, that you might feel are missing. And so I would love to know down below uh, some of your favorite works on the Russian Revolution. But this is just my short list. So I'm currently really enjoying The History of the Russian Revolution by Leon Trotsky. Uh, it's very well written and I think it's a really easy one to read, weirdly enough. Uh, it's just the size that really gets me. But talking about the Russian Revolution and going into this book, I always feel as though I need a bit of a refresher course on certain periods of history uh, when I am getting back into reading about them for the first time in a long time, and particularly with this book. Uh, because it is written by Trotsky, and Trotsky is one that I have forgotten quite a bit about if I ever knew it. So one thing I would suggest if you were looking to get into the Russian Revolution, uh, the fall of the Romanovs, etc., uh, I think the very short introductions by Oxford are pretty great. Short history by Oxford is a really valuable tool when you are just getting into a certain historical period or a historical event like the Russian Revolution. And so uh, their short history of the Russian Revolution is by S.A. Smith. So this is one that I was assigned in university uh, because I took a course on Russia in the 20th century. And so it was Russia from 1900 to 1999. And it was really fascinating. And this was the one that was really assigned to us for the Russian Revolution, which I was kind of disappointed by. It seems like at the time I really wanted a more detail-oriented work to dig into, but the Russian Revolution is so vast. So many things happened. There are so many really important players that you kind of have to keep up with. I think this is a really valuable one, and I think it gives you enough detail without feeling like you're going through these things in rapid succession. You're not getting any breathing room. I think it gives you enough detail about things. When talking about the Romanovs in general, I think there is one book that comes to mind for a lot of people, and that is the big, massive, beautiful book on the Romanovs by Simon Sebag Montefiore. And I love this book. I think it is really well written. It's very gossipy, uh, which gets on some people's nerves, but I think works really well for a history of the Romanovs. This covers the entirety of the Romanov dynasty from 1613 up to 1918 with the death of Tsar Nicholas II and his family. Uh, and so this is a really vast book. And so I think it's really great and I think it's a really valuable resource, but I think it's probably more useful for getting your feet wet and for deciding which figure among the family you might be most interested in reading more about because I do think this does pass over things quite rapidly. Even though it's a big book, it's got a lot to tell in that 300 years. And so I get why some people don't really like this. There are a lot of people who don't recommend this. I still do. I think it's really great to get a flyover of the entire family. And thus, you kind of get a flyover of the events that broadly led up to the Russian Revolution uh, in the spirit of this video. I think all of the Romanovs are fascinating. Uh, and I actually think the kind of Rurik dynasty prior to the Romanovs is also extremely fascinating. And I wish I could find more books on them. I think medieval Russia is really, really interesting. But multiple of the Romanovs are fascinating. But in the spirit of this video, our focus is kind of the last Romanovs and the Russian Revolution. I think if you read this book, you also get a good background on what was happening in the 19th century that was also building towards this unrest, which is really great and I think is background that you might want to have. Uh, so I know this one is on a lot of people's bookish bucket list and I really recommend it. Another big name in terms of Russian Revolution Romanov history is Helen Rapoport. Uh, so this is the Romanov sisters and this is just about their lives. She has another book that is entirely about 
kind of the last days of the Romanov family. And so I think for many of us, when we first got fascinated by the Russian Revolution and the last Romanovs, it was through a story of Anastasia. And so I think for many of us, the daughters are the most fascinating figures in the family. For me, they're not. Uh, I think Tsar Nicholas might be my favorite. I really, really like him. Uh, I also really like the children, and I think they are really fascinating. And this is a really interesting book because it really looks at their personal lives. It doesn't go into the really horrid events that led up to their death. It doesn't even really look into uh, their captivity there at the end. So this is in a weird way, kind of a fairy tale-like read that really looks into their life and examines their life as princesses, which I think is really interesting, uh, especially because they're so modern. I think that's probably another reason why the Russian Revolution and the death of the last Romanovs gets me is that they are so well documented. We have so many photographs of these girls. We have a uh, video of them actually and video of the family together, which I think makes it feel a little bit more like a personal tragedy because it feels as though you can know them to a certain extent better than you can other historical figures. Uh, and this book does a really good job of humanizing them and looking at them through a more personal lens. I think that's probably Helen Rappaport's strong suit is she is a little bit more of a personal historian in a way and that won't work well for everybody. I think some people find her books pretty boring. I really like her and so I think this is a really interesting one. I have not read her book on the last days of the Romanovs but that is definitely on my list. Another historian that people love to talk about when it comes to Russian history uh, is Robert K. Massey. And so I have his Peter the Great up here, and I also have a paperback version of Peter the Great, which I want to reread so bad and mark up. Peter the Great, his biography of Peter the Great is one of my all-time favorite pieces of nonfiction. And so it doesn't really have anything to do with the Russian Revolution or the last Romanovs, but uh, in general, Robert K. Massey has a bit of a series of nonfiction, starting with Peter the Great. He has a biography on Catherine the Great, which I have not read, but people think is genuinely amazing. Uh, and then he has a couple of books on the last Romanovs, which are more relevant to us today. He has Nicholas and Alexandra, which is maybe his most famous book. And then he has the Romanovs, the last chapter. And so if you're really interested in the history of the Romanovs in general, you might want to read through him as though you were reading a series of nonfiction. But uh, I read Nicholas and Alexandra years and years ago, and it's another one that I would love to reread. Maybe I should read the Robert K. Massey series in order. But uh, this is a phenomenal piece of nonfiction. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, this was published a very long time ago. It was published before they found the bodies, if I'm not mistaken. So I think some of his research is a little bit faulty because we now know the truth of what really happened. This was originally published a long time ago, so I'll check and uh, yes, 1967. Wow, so this was published longer ago than I thought. So yes, modern scholarship and modern scientific analysis uh, have kind of made parts of this book obsolete, uh, but for the most part, this is still just a really excellent look into the lives of the last Tsar and Tsarina. And through this book, you get a really excellent look at one of my favorite figures from this time period which is <laughs> Rasputin. Uh, so I love Rasputin. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'll say it many, many times. I just really love Rasputin. I'm genuinely intrigued by him. Uh, and so Rasputin is probably my favorite figure from this time period, from the revolutionaries, from the Romanovs, anybody. I just think he's fascinating. So Rasputin, if you don't know, is a little bit of a charlatan who came into the last Romanov's lives. Uh, their son, Alexei, who is the youngest child, they have four older daughters, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, and Anastasia. And so Alexei is their youngest, and unfortunately he has hemophilia. And apparently Rasputin is the only person they know that can genuinely help this boy. He gets really, really close with the Tsarina Alexandra. And we all know the really wonderful song, Ra, Ra, Rasputin, lover of the Russian queen. And so that's not really true. I don't think that's ever been confirmed. But 
there are a lot of rumors about Rasputin that I think are more important than what Rasputin actually was. Uh, there are so many rumors about him, about his relationship to the Tsarina, about his relationship to the girls, his relationship to the family in general. Uh, it is almost as though you can really not suss out who Rasputin was as a person through these stories and through these rumors. So I read a biography of Rasputin earlier this year by Douglas Smith. I rated it three stars. I thought it was a little bit celebratory of Rasputin, actually, and there is enough about him to disgust you uh, that nothing he did should be celebrated, in my opinion. But I do think it's really fascinating, and it's an interesting book because he acknowledges that the stories around Rasputin are more interesting and are essentially maybe more important than what we know for sure about Rasputin. And there's a lot about Rasputin that we don't know for sure. He goes off for years at a time. Nothing is verified of where he went or what he was doing during that time. Uh, so he's just a really enigmatic figure. He apparently drove women mad. And um, when you see a picture of him, which I think you can see on the cover of the book, you're kind of alarmed by that because he kind of looks as though he's staring into your soul in all of the photographs of him, which must have been what was his attractive quality, actually, because it does feel as though he's kind of looking at you. He's really seeing you, even from a photograph. And so apparently, I would imagine his gaze in real life was quite a thing to behold. And so maybe that's what made him so attractive uh, to the women of the court and everything. But he's a really fascinating figure. And if you've never heard anything about Rasputin, oh my gosh, look up his Wikipedia page. It's a wild ride from start to finish. It took so much to kill him. But that's one of the books of Rasputin that I've read. One that I have not read but is constantly recommended when you talk about Rasputin is the Rasputin file. And so this was written, I think, around 2000 when information was released by Russia and files were released to the public that included information about Rasputin and included personal documents by him that I think changed a lot of our perceptions of Rasputin. So a lot of that is put into this book, and I'm really fascinated by this, so this is one that I should definitely probably try and get my hands on because I just think Rasputin is endlessly fascinating. I know I'm missing a big gap with actually more formal histories of the Russian Revolution, but I'm genuinely a little bit more interested in the last Romanovs and their family and their personal dealings than I am specifically with the revolution. And so I think the short history and I think this kind of comprehensive nonfiction by Trotsky uh, will do me a lot of good in that regard. I haven't read much modern scholarship on the October Revolution, the February Revolution, uh, although I was paying attention a lot to that a couple of years ago when it was the 100th anniversary and a lot of interesting scholarship came out. But the last thing that I want to recommend uh, are all of these primary sources that you can get your hands on. So we also studied this in my Russian history class and I just think this is fascinating. This is another element that I think adds to continued fascination and interest in the last Romanovs of the Russian Revolution is that, like I said earlier, it was a very well-documented time period, not just in terms of photographs and video, but most of the members of the court at this time kept diaries that you can read. And so one of the ones that we read uh, was kept by a nurse or a maid uh, that worked for the Romanov family when the children were very young. The year 1905 sticks in my head uh, because that is when kind of Bloody Sunday was happening after the Russo-Japanese War, and I think she recorded what happened during that, actually. But she records such interesting information about the rooms that the children lived in, the children themselves, and specifically what sticks out to me and what I remember most vividly is that she writes about them receiving their Fabergé eggs every year, which is just genuinely amazing to me. The Fabergé eggs have always intrigued me, but that's a really interesting one. Uh, the girls also kept diaries. Uh, Olga and Maria, I know for a fact, did, as did Tsar Nicholas II. And so these are really interesting things to read and I think are really heartbreaking to read in parts, but they definitely recorded what was going on during World War I, uh, the opening engagements of the revolution. So I just think it's really amazing that not only can we learn about these people, but we can read their personal writings. And as with all diaries, parts of them are 
extremely boring. And so that is something to keep in mind when you go into reading anyone's diary. But I think definitely these are really valuable primary sources. And if you are fascinated by the family like I am, you might want to read uh, their diaries. I've only read these things in part. I've never read one of them in full, but I believe you can get them in a very good modern translation online nowadays. Uh, so that would be something to sink your teeth into if you were also really fascinated by the last Romanovs. So that was a really quick video on just a few of my favorite books on the last Romanovs and Rasputin and the Russian Revolution. If you have read any of these, I would love to talk about them down below. And I would love to know too if you have any recommendations. I know there are some that I'm missing. I think 10 Days That Shook the World is a really big primary source from the time period. And there are a lot of really excellent other books set during this time that I have not yet read. But uh, this is something that is a source of endless fascination for me. And I am known in my friend group in real life as kind of a Romanov fanatic. Uh, a friend of mine will literally text me anytime she sees anything <laughs> about the Romanovs or about Rasputin in particular. She will send me a text and uh, tell me that she's found a new book or she learned something about Rasputin, which I think is funny that that's my reputation in real life. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.